I have seen the Thousand Year Blood War first episode and second episode of Call of Free, and I know a lot of people have been waiting for this. I'm going to try and do this as linear as I can from the opening, from episode 1 to episode 2. I'm not going to give too much spoilers because the events really did say not to and they are going to be searching YouTube. So I am going to be very careful, but give enough for you guys to know. So first I'm going to do a non-spoiler reaction in a sense and then towards the later half of the video. Give a little bit of tidbits about what I think and just stuff like that. And you know, you'll know for people that don't want to get spoiled, you'll know. But anyway... Hit that like, subscribe, all that jazz. Let's get into it, shall we? Because I'm very f***ing excited to talk about this. So first and foremost, before I get into my reaction about things, let's talk about my fundamental thought process going into this. We know that we've had many memes about movie quality, and it turns out something like Basby versus Toshiro, which, you know, is it was all right. It wasn't as, as hyped up as it was at the pre-screenings from, like, Core 1 and Core 2, right? Like, it just isn't, you know... And I came into this pre-screening with the notion that whatever I say is going to be taken at face value because, one, I'm not Japanese, and I'm not very, like... You you know Japanese culture of like oh like everything's sugoi and everything's like amazing and you know because Japanese people are very like that they're very 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 nice so for me it's like I'm coming in being very very serious being very critical and I watched the first episodes of Core 1 and the first episodes of Core 2 to kind of give a solidification of the, the standard so to say so first and foremost obviously the event starts off with showing every PV under the sun including Bandai's PV for the game really building up that hype and then the last PV was what you see with the opening and ending and then it gets into it at, no it gets into it with the look back so giving a look back from episode 1 to 10 and then from 13 to 24 etc uh, etc et to give everyone like a catch up then it goes into the opening my god this is you know and again i take recency bias into accountability but ever since the opening song has dropped i've been listening to the pv for almost every single day i really enjoy this song right and I love, you know, to, to give my kind of standard, I love Yui's, uh, I, I love opening two, Yui's opening six, no, that's opening five, I love uh, Valencia, uh, uh, v Veronica, sorry, opening nine, opening 12, and op opening 13, for, for obvious reasons. So that's kind of my standard of what I think is, like, really goated. Of course, I do like Kitani's uh, opening one for Thousand Year Blood War, and that is, like, I feel like a very safe opening. Opening two, eh, but this opening... From a song and a visual level is beyond. And I, and I have to say, it's like, is it opening 13 level? I don't know. To some people, it's, it's obviously like that's the top tier. I think this is a different level of opening 13 or 12 where it is... It gives me that old bleach feel, but it's so hype because it fits the tone very well. It starts off very, very serious, like showing each of the main key components of the, the arc, the main characters, right? For example, showing Ukitake with the back with Mimi Hagi, right? It is mo mainly black and white slash gray, and then the colored parts are the, I guess, the main key points of that character. For like Ichigo, it's his sword. For Ukitake, it's his back. And then now... Uh, shows her sword. It was the 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 sun sword, the the reflective mirror sword, and Nemu. It was her eyes for some reason. But like, there's there's other key components where it shows each character, but very fluidly, very 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 fluidly. Must must I say? And then when the drop hits, very like action packed. A lot's happening. I can't even remember. That's the thing. There was just so much sensory overload for me to be like. What's happening? With opening two, it's like, okay, you know, basketball, fucking, you know, boxing fight, you know, uh, Ruki with an extinguisher, and I was not like, you can remember those things. For this, it was like, there's so much going on. The one funny thing was Askin running away from Grimjow, and that was like the camera angle and just like the, the movement. It was funny, but like cool at the same time. We got to see Grimjow in an opening, and it's just stuff like that and then it ends the opening ends with yuha with his almighty like the black thing and the multiple eyes it almost it, and the opening and ending starts off with a hand uh grabbing like i would assume uh like this i guess like a piece of sand maybe but it, it starts off with him grabbing a piece of sand and then it ends with somebody grabbing a piece of sand so 
take that as you will. I will say that I absolutely cannot wait. If it gets leaked or if it doesn't, I cannot wait to see people's reactions to the opening because I do think, and I've seen the Dun Dun Dun's opening and people are putting that on the level of like anime uh, opening of the season. Um, I think Bleach will have it. I, I, I know people are going to sound biased towards it, but so far, I think... Creeping up to his song for the Dun Dun is like obviously very catchy. People are doing like trends to it. I get that, right? That's Creeping Nuts in a nutshell. But as an opening goes, as an anime opening, I think this is like the best. You know, I, I, I just, I want to listen to it over and over and over. It is so cool. In terms of the ending song, uh, you don't really get to see the ending song. You get to hear it for like three minutes. Granted, it's very dubstepy. Um, it's not something that, it's, it's good. It's good, but it's one of those like, do I like it or do I not? And it's like, it's weird because it's like the tone shifts too much in the song. Like that what you hear in the PV is like the middle part of that ending. And the start is very like dubstepy. And then it just like the transition from like this slow-ish dubstep then transitions into like what you hear in the PV. And it's like very like, did I like that transition? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, it was just like Ichibei Yuha and Ichigo, like what you would see at the end of an episode where it's like it goes uh, like uh, where it's like a p piece of paper and then color gets added. So it was kind of like that. So um, but the opening, whoo, man, the opening is so good, man. I, hmm, it is peak. I love it. So the start of the episode for episode 27 is and again, I don't know if this is pre-screening diff, but. It's so, so don't quote me on this, but from what I saw, half of it is recap. So you're going to start off with uh, Senjimaru um, and the Squad Zero members killing themselves, basically. What you saw in the last call. And then, obviously, she goes into Bankai. Everyone gets caught up. You get to see the, the rehashings of what happens, like as not getting stabbed. Lilay Baro shooting himself, all that sort of stuff. You get all of that. But there's some scenes as well where it's a different perspective. You're getting to see people's perspective from the world of the living. You get to see, um, you know, also Ryukan get to... I, I can't remember if that was after the Bankai or... or no, no, that was Rayo stuff. Okay, so... You, but you get to see, like, a different perspective in some degree. You get to see, like, uh, Ichigo and, and, and Kayan... Uh, not Kayan, uh, Yuroichi and uh, fucking Ganju... Uh, talk about it a little bit so you, know, you get to have some like added scenes on top of that and then of course while the bankai is happening you also go back to ichibei versus yuha and the whole like it's gonna squash you like an ant the clap ichibei goes up to the seal and then what happens in the manga happens but the good thing about the manga so this isn't really spoilers because what happens in the manga happens right like i'm not gonna spoil anything that you don't already see in the manga so but what is added you know, and this isn't really a spoiler because the outcome is the same. Many people had complaints about like how Ichibei got fucking left, right, good nighted. Um, the great thing that put makes Ichibei go into the mausoleum is the fact that when Yuha goes into the Almighty, his absolute omnipotence or omnipotence, whatever you want to call it, the Almighty is so scary and when when i say that it's like it makes him seem i know the the point is to make him seem like a god but like they give a very cool visual representation of every single time that uh yuha uses almighty and it just works so like uh Ichi ichibai goes in for attack and boom flash on the screen something like 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 a pop-up happens and then boom like yuha's already moved yuha's already here and ichibai is visibly annoyed that like he can't hit him and then comes the ma mausoleum which you all guys saw in the uh the, the the preview right the mausoleum happens and then they start talking and uh Ichibei does a really cool um people were also talking about you no know, Kubo uh talking about how they did like an original song and essentially what this original song is Ichibei doing uh, a dance and when you hear about a dance it's kind of like maybe comedic or cringy this one was kind of like it's, it was a head turn of like what's happening here but it became very much like a traditional shintoist buddhist -y dance it lasts for about maybe 15 to 20 seconds it doesn't overstay its welcome at all it sounds very religious and after the chant is done hands closed says his prayers and then turns into the Muslim as you guys see in the PV. And then obviously as Ichibei is talking, X, Y, and Z, 
uh Yu then says the same thing that Ichibei does. He gets like really annoyed, he gets really frustrated, like what the fuck is going on here? Goes in for the attack that you also see in the PV. And as he goes in for the attack, Yu does something which uh, you see that almighty like flash on the screen again, and then boom, in the manga, like he's 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 gone into absolute pieces. And it's re trust me, like I know how I say it doesn't probably give it justice, but when you visually see it, it's like that's cool. Because what the build-up was that the manga didn't do, the build-up was all about showcasing how fearsome Yuha is by dodging all these attacks and being one step ahead of Ichibei. And Ichibei's just reacting to what Yuha is doing. And then when playtime was over, Yuha just finished it and, it and it fit perfectly. And then because of the Almighty getting activated... And again, I don't fully speak Japanese at all, right? Even when I had someone next to me that, that could speak Japanese. Um, my interpretation, and again, I don't want you to quote me on this at all, is that I feel like the Almighty, when the Almighty was awakened, Hushwald was definitely affected because the flames that were engulfing him stop. And, then, and I know I'm getting into spoiler territory, and I'm, I, I'll be very light with this. I'm just going to just say, like, the Almighty affected Harsh World. Like, they're still stuck in the Bankai and whatever. And then, obviously, the antithesis of, of Uryu is what gets him out. And then the fight with Uryu and, and, and Senji Maru happens, which we see from, like, the previews of the, the PV and also the screenshots that was added onto the website. Uh, that fight is very good, and I... As I've said in many videos before, I'm not an Uryu stan. I'm not. But the CG, uh, the CG, by the way, by the way, when they were gassing up the CG and everyone's like doing posts and being like, oh no, CG. Trust me, the CG's great. If you can, if I had to give a point of reference for the CG, look at the first music video of Kitano's Eternal for, you know, the, for Call cool 1. Look at the, the animations and backgrounds and effects for that. I, I would say that's probably the best example, but then also look at Senna Rin's Core 2 and look at the, the effects for CG on that and then put it into the Bleach opening and the episodes and times that by 10. It looks phenomenal. And I really cannot stress that enough. It does look phenomenal. I hate to say this because it is such a meme. And I understand you're in a theater, you're hearing the surround sound, and it is a big screen. But uh, I really hate to say this. And for the opening too, there was a lot of detail in the characters more so than the episodes. But there was a lot of detail, I felt. And maybe that was just me having like an instinctive like reaction to it, right? Again, I'd have to see it again to kind of get like a non-amped non up bias. But I will say, like, is it movie quality? In, ter <laughs> in terms of, uh, as far as the average anime goes, uh, if this was, uh, it was very close. I will say it was very, very close because there's just some angles and some camera frames and there was, oh, I, we'll get into that. And I'll tell you if, if I think it's movie quality because there's so much to unpack with this. So anyway, the Senjimaru and Uryu fight happens. The little drop of blood that you see at the start of uh, the Core 3 trailer, uh, that is uh, in regards to that fight, the Uryu versus Senjimaru fight. It is a great fight. Senjimaru does some dirty work. Uryu does some really great work too. But um, if you want to know how that fight ends, obviously, like if you've read the manga, you know who wins obviously right it's kind of the point um let's just say uno reverse card i'll leave it at that right uno reversal then it goes back onto ichibei versus no sorry ichibei is already yeeted obviously ichigo comes down with the rest of the gang they do as you see in the pv or in the manga calling ichibei is his name uh, I liked, I actually liked that one too. Then it starts getting into a little bit of original content because this is the part where Yuha does the stabbing and they turn, like once Soul King is stabbed, the whole screen goes into this horror bloodstain type red where like, like that's it. Like we're on the, like the actual fraction that everything's about to fall apart if this sword is removed. Like it gives a very big emphasis. And then we get onto episode 228, if my remembrance is correct, right? And again, there's, uh, no, 
Sorry, I tell a lie. Still on 27, before I get into 28, I will say that there is a lot of the flashbacks that you see from Core 2 in regards to the Soul King. You see the free whirlpools, and you see how Yuha is related to that. So I'll leave that at that, but you do get to see more lore in regards to that. And some very horrific scenes too in regards to uh and again visible confusion and obviously it's not over you're still going to get more lore in regards to that so it was very law heavy towards the second part after the stabbing or yeah after the stabbing i believe and then fuck it we'll get into episode 28 because that's the one i want to talk about the most so episode one definitely a banger right half of it was recap but the recap that you don't get banger like visible banger and i think it's a great way to start off the call but i think what really brings it home and i don't want to dismantle or, or, or i don't want to like take away the, the the hype of the first episode because it it is absolutely a great way to start off bleach season right second episode is where shit kicks off ichigo versus yuha and you know if I, if i had to give it a comparison and i've said i've said this on twitter if i had to give a comparison it is longer than episode seven of core one with ichigo versus yuha because that was obviously very quick and it was almost like it was a parallel to that like it was very reminiscent of that but more so much more went into that and so much more was done better and it almost it, it was great like you know people are gonna ask was it episode six was it yamamoto versus yuha and yamamoto versus yuha was a whole episode this was like maybe a, maybe 60 percent of the episode but god was it good like ichigo versus yuha round one was like very like one-sided you know, big, big flashy powers. It was done like what a minute or two, and then they did Gold Christ, and they also do Gold Christ again. Um, I know I didn't say it correctly in this episode. Uh, the yes, it does start off in the Soul Palace, as you guys in the manga have read, but then it goes everywhere else. You're talking, it goes to Tenjiro's uh, Hot Springs, and then it goes to uh, Ichibei's is like uh, Hoden, like uh, not Hoden, but like the where where ichigo goes to meet ichibe for the first time in that little building it goes crashing through that there's like a big thing and i'll talk about spoilers obviously on the second part but this is a fight that i think is like this is is it the best i believe i would ooh, it's definitely like top five right i'll be i'll be i'll be like critical of myself it's top five because i know how the internet's going to be like but when i i think every time i've gassed up a fight but whether it be on twitter or on youtube to look forward to i've not missed and this is one of those i i would honestly say i cannot wait for the for the opening for people's reaction for the opening and this fight and I, there's a scene where ichigo is looking and this isn't really a spoiler. It's just something that like is really cool. There's a scene where Ichigo is looking down on Yuha, and I'll tell you what the yellow thing is in the in the in the spoilers section. But the yellow thing behind him f like shines behind him, and he looks like an absolute fucking god. Some stuff happens, and then uh, you go into the reaction of <sighs> again, in terms of like. It's hard to say what's a spoiler because I know some of you are anime onlys and I know some of you are manga readers. So it's like, what is a spoiler? Then it then it continues. You know, I won't say what, what concludes with that battle with Ichigo and Yuha, but something happens. I'll, I'll, I'll address later. And Ichigo grabs the sword and as you know about the Soul King, gets fucking... But there's power behind it. Like in the manga, it's just, it looks like one swipe. But when he hits the Soul King, there's there's visual, visible like restraint. Like he's trying really hard to not do it. And like the cracks, like he, he's getting more and more and more. And then bam. And then after that, whole world goes into disarray. Everyone's like, oh fuck. Uh, Ukatake, I know like I'm, I'm jumbling a bit. I'm going off memory. Ukatake is healing Kampachi. Which like which is good because like we never really get to see Kampachi healed. I don't know why Ukutaka, but like he says something, um, 
So he's like, he looks like he's visibly trying really hard to, to heal Kampachi here, Ukitake or things. But as, as I said, when, when the Soul King gets his, his thing done uh, and the whole world's going crazy, Ryukin has a reaction, Ishin has a reaction. Uh, there was a moment where I thought I was going to see Ruruka because it shows that tent in Hueco Mundo. It shows the fucking tent. I was like, here we go. We're going to get fucking Ruruka. We didn't get Ruruka. We didn't, that's the worst thing about this episode is that we didn't get to see <coughs> Ruruka. And then, then we go to Kisuke's lab. You know, Issei is in there. Like, she says some things. Uh, but um, there's a part where it shows Ukitake. And Ukitake is kind of like, I know what I need to do. Like, he notices, like, obviously what's happening. Uh, Kisuke's shook. Um, and, yeah, like, it kind of ends off with that. I mean, Yuri Witchy gets her scene with, like, the, 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 the threads that covered Yuha. But then, yeah, it kind, it kind of ends like that. Right, and it ends with the title uh, "Kill the King." That's how it ends, and then it goes into the, to the ending, and then obviously the, the voice actors came out and they had their little talk uh, with Basby, Morita, and uh, Iriu's uh, voice actor. I forgot his name off the top of my head. In terms of the announcements, they just showed like soul puzzle, line stickers, goods, and then the PV that you saw for the 20th anniversary animation. Uh, nothing else other than that, which I was a bit like, okay, cool. Um, and then, yeah, that was it. Like, Ichigo came out, like, the, the little, uh, mascot came out. They took pictures and that was the end of it, right? And it was, it was such a surreal experience. I felt choked up. Like, my throat was like, you know, like, I was trying not to cry because, you know, it was like one of those once in a lifetime opportunities and I got to be a part of that. And I was in the same room of these people that like I, I've hear, heard for years. So that was something. And yeah, so the spoilers part of this video. And again, like I'll only give like a handful because I don't want to like be on anyone's like bad side in terms of like being told not to do anything on YouTube. But I will say, OK, so Ichigo uh, gets a good GG show, right? Gets shown again. And I think it is the best gets a good GG show in comparison to the one that we've seen episode 21 against like the Candices or like the, the Bambis, whatever the fuck you want to say. Uh, way better gets a good GG show. And there's moments where I think it was Gold Christ. I think it was. Where I think it was either like a big arrow that's like the one that Yuha does against Yamamoto. You know how his sword like drops to the ground and you see that big arrow. I think he does something reminiscent to that and shoots at Ichigo. Or it was Gold Christ and I can't remember which one it was if I'm being honest with you. But Ichigo just completely blocks it with the small Getsuga. Exactly how you saw in Candies through the lightning bolt and Ichigo just does like a gets a good attention and it's like the, the smallest one and i like that because it's being shown and it's pretty evident now that that getsuga is being used as a blocking getsuga and then you're gonna get to see the getsuga gg show which is like i think it's better and the like he does it like i would say the the shot the shooting of it wasn't as good as episode 21 it's like it's on a level for sure but I, I think the aftermath, like the after, the, the burn, the damage, the longevity of it was way better. And I think was definitely represented so much more. The showdown between Ichigo and Yuha, the cam, like there's like this cool 360 camera movement, which was fantastic. The fight with Ichigo versus Yuha is going again place to place to place. Ichigo is absolutely, you know, like how Yuha grabs Ichigo by the neck in episode uh, seven. It's kind of like that. Ichigo is absolutely dominating the absolute living fuck out of Yuha. Drags him down to the fucking like uh, Tanjiro, Tanjiro's, uh, you know, hot springs. Grabs him like absolute spears him with his sword, and Yuha's like holding it like this with like blue vein. But like there's visible like struggle this is where like the the big arrow comes out from like behind him and he tries to shoot ichigo and he just like nah what's that fam what, what's that ichigo is absolutely doing so much to this guy and then you think wait a minute he's not in almighty and then he goes almighty and then it's built a little different and ichigo gets absolutely bodied but the one thing that i love about this is that like as ichigo gets up to like go back at Yuha and it's very like it's very tenseful because like Ichigo looks down and out and he's got blood all over his face and everything. Uh Ichigo goes to go and attack again. 
behind Ori, he is healing him as he's going in for another get together. And it was just a beautiful team up because it's almost like Ichigo expects Orihime to do something and Orihime is kind of reading what Ichigo is going to do and she's she's doing support things and I love Orihime in this episode. She does bits and then when uh, Yuroichi comes to do what she needs to do. So that in and of itself was, uh, it was just so cool. Uh, I will try and put up the PV shots as well as, as I'm talking about it, just to give you an idea. But again, the, the, the shots of like Ichibe and the baby, that's kind of solidified just a little bit more within this episode. And I feel like it's going to keep getting solidified more and more. But the free worlds, I think is probably the most interesting thing because you do get to see more of that. Uh, and in one, again, my interpretation of it is that in one of the whirlpools, Yuha is in one of the whirlpools and you see him go from a baby to Tenzazangetsu looking Yuha to teenage looking Yuha to 40 year old looking Yuha to what he is now. And it's kind of like, to me, my interpretation is like he's being born from the whirlpool. So this is a, a thing that like, which is a bit odd because you see the baby in the screenshot of like the umbilical cord. So again, Maybe my interpretation is a little bit off, but when you see the episode, you'll kind of maybe see where I'm coming from, and maybe subtitles will obviously give me a better outlook. But that was what it looked like. It looked like he was born from the whirlpool. Or, yeah, because there's this also weird thing as well, where in this state, in the whirlpools, Ichigo looks like he's in one of the whirlpools too, but he's like he's in his thousand year blood war outfit. Ichigo looks like lifeless. Like, he looks dead. And I'm like, wait, is this a premonition? Is this... What was this? So, like, Ichigo is like, looks, like, dead in this flashback. Like, his eyes are all back. Like, he's... It looks very horrific. Like, what... Bro, what happened to Ichigo, right? Like, man looks like... Like, his corpse is, like, just lifeless. Obviously, it's a corpse, right? But... Uh, so that was, like, very confusing. You get to see, the, the only stone route you really get to see other than, like, the elite guard is, like, Latoto, Giselle, and Bambietta. Like, they still survived. Um, you don't really get to see anyone else again. Oh, and I guess I'll just leave it off with this last one. Um, because, like, again, sensory overload. There's so much, like, in my head that, like, is so jumbled up. But I gave, like, the main things. I think the last thing I want to do before ending this video is Kyoku does go into the Mukun where all the key slots are. And you get to see, like, this long pan shot of, like, the imprisoned Aizen. And as Ukitake, not Ukitake, Shunsui, as Kyoku walks up close to Aizen, Aizen with his full face, like, covered up, uh, just nods and, like, looks down. And that's pretty much it. So, you know, all in all, do I think it is movie quality? Um, I think the CG looks as if it... Oh God, how do I say this without, like, overblowing it out of proportion? If Marvel were to do an anime, like, like on an endgame level... No, it just looks really, 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 really good. And I don't want to say movie quality because I'm a little bit scared to. Because, obviously, like, it has such a reputation of memes, but... Out of all the pre-screenings from the first two episodes of Core 1 and 2, this is by far uh, the best. And I think Pyro Films really took Pyro Films to heart because it really does match up. And I'm taking the equation of like big screen and the surround sound. I'm going off memory about what happened and the camera angles that I saw and the CG that I saw. And I gave you an example of... You know, the, the music videos that you get and then times that by 10 because a lot of them were like, whoa, this is better than the music videos and the music videos were great. Um, and it's constant. It's so constant. So it's a 30 minute video. So I'm going to catch you guys later. You guys, of course, have this fine Debbie Hansen. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot to talk about in the coming week. So take it easy. Peace out.